Hey guys, Ronnie here from M5 Stack. In today's video, we are going to build our very own smart plant monitoring system. Now, in order to accomplish that, we are going to use four modules and units combined. The first unit we will use is the ENV2 unit, which is right here. This will allow us to monitor the temperature, air pressure, and humidity all in one. Now, for the second unit, we are going to use the watering unit, which is already located inside the plant right here. The watering unit includes two things. The first thing is the pump, that which allows us to pump water from the water reservoir into the plant. The second thing is the earth sensor, the soil moisture sensor, which is a capacitive sensor, not a resistive one, which means it's corrosive resistant. Now for here we have the core 2 with the core 2 battery here, the bottom, bottom 2 for the core 2. Now we need the bottom 2 because we are going to connect two modules to it, one is the ENV2 and one is the watering. After we have all this done, we are ready for the project and to monitor our plan accordingly, both automated and manually, which we will show later on how to do. Let's get started. Hey guys, and we are back into our device and the UI flow. As we can see right here, this is my screen and this is a live scene of the actual build I'm making. Now let's take a look at the code and take a look at the hardware. Well, I would like to start with the hardware first. As we can see, we have the ENV connected here, as well as the pump connected here with the soil sensor, which is the watering unit S1. Now, if we take a closer look over here, we could actually see the core 2 screen. I've designed it that way that we can see all the data in and out. We have temperature, we have pressure, we have humidity and soil moisture, as well as we have one button switch that we can control in order to manually turn on the water on and off. Now, as we can see right here, this is how it looks like. Now, over our screen, if we head over it, we can see that we have the UI Flow version 1.7.2, as well as I added two sensors. The first one is the ENV, which is connected to port A, pins number 32 and 33. And we have the watering, which is connected to port B, 26 and 36. 36? Yes, 36, right. Now, as we can see, here is port A, which is the ENV, and here is port B, which is the watering. Now, as you will see right in front of you, I haven't connected the pump yet, and I will explain why. Once I connect the pump, it will make a very loud noise. Now, once I put my hand onto it, the noise will stop. Now, you may be wondering why is it. Now, let's take a closer look and see a live demo. I have a water right here, a cup of water. Later on we will use a real plant, but let's demonstrate on a cup of water first. Once I put the device into the water, the pump will recognize that there is enough water and it will stop pumping water. This is demonstrate that if it was a real plant and we will water it, the pump will stop, means there is enough water for the plant. But if the plant will get dry, slowly, slowly, then the pump will give more water as necessary. Once the pump gave enough water, it will stop again, as we can see right here. Now, in order to understand it better, let's head over to our code. I disconnect the pump again, just in order not to make noise once we don't put it in the cup, just like that. And what's it? let's head over to our code to understand how does it work. Now, first I've set up a setup loop right here and I've configured a few variables. The first variable will be the moisture value variable, which is set to zero, just to initialize it. Then I set scale to zero, minimum value, maximum value. Now, the maximum value will be the value you get when the, the sensor, the soil sensor right here is completely dry, which means if it is like this in the complete air and we take a look into the value, we will see it's around, it's jumping, but we will see that it's around maybe around 1,800. That should be the max value. It's jumping because it's not connected. So let's connect it for a moment, just like this. Once we connect it, we can see that the value is around, let me see, around 1000. If I don't touch it, I shouldn't touch this part if we want it completely dry. So if I don't touch it, it the value can get up to 1800, which is about right. I write the value in the computer 1800. Now the value we want for the minimum is the value when we get enough water. Now, how do we measure that? We actually put it into the water and then look at the value again. 
Now the value we can see right now will be around 1600. That will be around the value that we will get, 1600. So we will write both value, both the high value and the low value in order to get different results. Now, once we put both of them, as you can see, I put the minimum value 1620 and the maximum value about 1800. It's time to move to the next part of the software. The next part would be a loop. In the loop, we set the soil moisture value to the value we get from the ADC, which means as we can see right here, we have the watering, which is connected to the ADC. We can both control the pump as output and get input from the soil moisture. So the ADC is the input from the soil moisture. Then we execute the code in order to set few variables. Now scale, we do basic calculation. We take the minimum value minus the maximum value and then we divide it by 100. This is to scale the value into percentage. And then finally we get the percentage by taking the moisture value minus the max value and then multiply it by the scale that we receive right here. That's how we do the basic math to take those two values and get the percentage. 0% means zero water, 100% means full of water. Now, the next step will be to set some labels. As we can see, we have labels here. So we will set the temperature to the environment sensor temperature, and then the pressure to the environment sensor pressure, as well as the humidity to the environment sensor humidity. Now, the last label would be the soil moisture label, which we will set to the watering ADC value. Now, here is the important part. If soil percent is less than 10%, means that less than 10% water we have, it means completely dry, almost completely dry, we will set the water switch on just to make it look nice that the water switch is on as an animation, as well as we will turn on the pump. Now, if it's more than 10%, we will turn off the pump and turn off the switch. Then we will wait half a second before we will continue this loop. So every time we will get the value, turn it into percentage, check if there is less than 10% water, if it is, give water. If not, turn off the water. Now, over here, we have two more functions, which are basically for the manual watering. We can use it for here. So I press it, and then basically we can give water manually, just like here we can see on the computer and the UI flow. There is a water control for manual control. Now, if you use the automatic control, you don't need the manual control. But sometimes you don't want automatic control just to make sure you don't overflow the house or some issue occur in your automation so manual control can be also useful this is depends on the application you are trying to use for the manual control we have here an if switch that the, if the water switch is on we will set the watering pump to one and if the water switch is off we will set the watering pump to zero this will not stop until we will turn on the pump or turn off the pump so we will need to manually control it and that's basically how it works and how everything gets connected together now let's test the demo one more time after we understand we will connect the pump to the wire just like that and then once there is not enough water it will work once we put it in the water it will keep quiet as well as we can see at all time the sensor value from the environment sensor right here now thank you for watching and i really really hope that you learned something new during this tutorial and i will definitely see you in our next one